When one comes to the museum, you see that some of the spaces are very substantially as Irma Stern would have had them, and particularly the lounge area, the studio and the dining room. And in the studio, in fact, it's very, very accurately represented the way she had it, including, for instance, her overcoat, her towel where she wiped her hands, her paint brushes, her paint tubes, etc. So they're all kept the way that she would have had them. When I first saw it, I actually I came as a teacher because I taught for five years at an art center and I brought students here. So my experience was just the same as the students because I had never been to a museum that was someone's house. But also it's so rare to have an artist's house where you can walk in and literally see the room in which that person painted or the, the dining room where that person had her friends and ate. The first room that they come to is this room behind me, which is the pink room. It's everybody's favorite, or almost everybody's favorite. Maybe they feel some kind of excitement looking at these lots of portraits, and then they look behind them, and then they see these old chairs and this old furniture that you don't get anywhere nowadays. And it's like, oh, this is actually someone's house. It's a warm feeling. Irma Storn was born in 1894 in Schwarzerenecke, which is a small little village. And in her young life, she moved between Germany and South Africa, living variously in both countries. She also studied in Germany and studied to become an artist there. And eventually they moved to Cape Town as a family, and it is here that she then settled for the rest of her life. When Irma Stern started as a young artist in South Africa, she was very much derided, although celebrated in Germany. She had her first solo show in this country in 1922. There was a sense at that stage that this woman was just mad in how she painted, because South Africa was looking for something that was very traditional and like very realistically painted landscapes, etc. And she came with these bright colors and bold shapes. There's a pureness to the color that she uses in her paints, as if she squeezed them out of the paint cube directly to the canvas. In her lifetime, she became incredibly well known and was the best selling South African artist and showed internationally to, to huge acclaim, as well as locally to huge acclaim. When Irma Stern died, in her will, she left the house and its contents in a trust so that the arts in South Africa and abroad could be furthered. She never stipulated a museum. But then UCT and the Irma Stern Trust went into partnership in order to house this museum. So it is a partnership between those two entities. The function of the museum has changed a little bit over the years. Currently, the museum is a site where we celebrate conversations and we allow for dialogue, often about complex issues, and then the inspiration of the place, the restfulness of the space allows one to rethink those complex issues. So the property is her former home where she lived for most of her life. So already you've got that sense of her character. But additionally, you see the furniture she had, which is furniture that she gathered when she was traveling the world. What is so nice is that when people come to the museum and have come in the last 50 years, we have got so many records of people just being overawed and being in absolute wonder at both the museum as a site, as well as Irma Stern's work within this museum, and just how inspiring and how wonderful many of her artworks, her paintings, her sculptures, etc., are. I always just imagine her roaming around this house and sometimes just checking if everything is okay. (laughs) 
Emma Stone was inspired by various elements. In her young life particularly, she was very inspired but was by an art movement called German Expressionism, which has a very particular approach to use of color and form and shape in order to explore expression and psychology. So that was her early inspiration, but she was also very inspired by her travels. She's very famous for having traveled a lot in her life, Europe, but also on the African continent very significantly. And this was a great source of inspiration to her too. I think that my job as an artist living now is to always look into the past with context. So that is something that we really do. That is the conversation and questions. How do I contextualize the various objects that are in here? Because that also touches on a controversial subject of um, how one acquires these objects in, in colonial Africa and how one accumulates them. Accumulation is a very interesting thing. At that time in the late 90s, or even today, there isn't many definitions or many ways in which skin tone, especially my skin tone, is represented in popular culture, especially painting. So that was my entry in documenting myself and having her as a guide to color. Color, texture, application of paint, the way the brush strokes are broken. I love the depiction of blackness, especially the technical depiction of black skin. I think the idea of bringing in contemporary artists in, into the space is for us to, to carry on with the dialogue um, that Irma Stern's work and process created. Because when, when you create artworks, you're starting a dialogue about something. And having contemporary artists in the space, they expand on that dialogue. They look at the work critically and oftentimes maybe radically and then they have conversations with the works that are on display. And I think for us as a nation, it's important to have those conversations and carry on with them, the conversations that Emma started. And what is the best way to do that if you don't include your contemporary artist? It's wonderful to see how he is inspired by Irma Stearns' work, but inspired, but also speaks back to Irma Stearns' work. So there's a complex conversation that's going on there. A museum is a cultural institution and with cultural institutions they need to be accessible to the public even though they're, they're preserving very valuable artifacts but if those artifacts remain hidden and not seen and the public not interacting with them then there is no purpose of a cultural institution for existing. And that's where education then becomes an important part of creating that access for people to come into the museum, look at the work, interact with it, and also critically look at it. It's a way of creating that access to say to people, listen, you can come to the museum and it is a safe space for you to engage in and feel welcome and also be appreciated as a person. Irma Stone was very interested in um, young artists. For instance, she did work quite heavily with artists from the Michaela School of Art, which obviously is part of UCT. So the idea of this place being used, the museum being used as a site of education and to foster and love for art in, in youngsters is something that would very much have chimed with her. Irma Stone Museum hosts art workshops with neighboring schools and these workshops are for mainstream schools as also learners with barriers to learning. We've had quite a number of high school students coming in and we've had three art centres having a workshop with Atipatra Ruga, who is our artist in residence. Our idea is to bring in a lot of learners from areas that are disadvantaged and also reach out to schools where Normally there would be no art um, as a subject. To be able to not just take, but to be able to give as well, to give painting lessons, to be able to give uh, remix lessons, because that's the main thing. I've been remixing Irma Stern for such a long time now that 
we are able to really, really create a new image because it is so many stories that are in her life that represent all of us, but we just need to find a place and also just take our seats within that art historical moment. I think it's very rare for an artist to have the longevity that Irma Stern had. Whereas Irma Stern, it's amazing how she just keeps talking to new generations in a new way. So if one looks at in her lifetime, how she really was at the forefront of conversations and how she continues to be an artist that allows us to address current issues. It's interesting how she has that absolute longevity and relevance that keeps on being there. This legacy, this wonderful house has continued to survive.